Good morning. Good morning. Now this is the day that the Lord has made and we rejoice and we are glad in it, but this is the day of the resurrection. This is the day when our favorite word is Alleluia. Thanks be to God. And so on this day, in this moment, I welcome all of you to this time of worship. We join with millions upon throughout the world to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Uh, he is risen, and you will respond. He is risen indeed. So let's try it. Sloan, can you help me with this? Sure. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Sloan, do you think they can be a little louder? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Good job, Sloan. Would you share with me our call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin? Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Let us worship God whose love is stronger than death. Alleluia. Let us worship God with songs of joy. Please stand as we share Christ the Lord is risen today.
Good morning. Please join me for the invocation and the Lord's Prayer found in your bulletin. Eternal God, we come with joy and hope to hear you call us by name, welcoming us into the new reality of resurrection life. Open our hearts and minds so we may see signs of resurrection all over our world, and so that we may truly love and serve the world as your resurrection people. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Happy Easter. I have been a part and listened to so many children's messages in my lifetime, so when Pastor Chris asked if I wanted to lead one for today, I of course said yes. This is truly a full circle moment, and I'm feeling so happy and blessed to be a part of this service. I would like, I'd like to invite the kiddos up here today for a little message and activity, but anyone is welcome to join. We're all God's children, so come on up. guys sit around here for me yeah on the steps you want to sit take a spot beautiful yeah yeah come sit Hey guys, you know something awesome about God? He makes ugly things beautiful. I want us to think about it. So what happens in the fall? Can you guys tell me? Yeah, just shout it out. Exactly, the leaves turn colors and fall off the trees and it gets colder. And then what season comes next? Winter. Yeah, and winter can feel a lot like death, right? It's cold and dark. The plants are dead, many animals go into hibernation, and then what comes after winter? Spring. You guys are so smart. <laughs> so tell me what happens during spring. Exactly. The weather gets... It rains a lot, yeah. The weather gets warmer and flowers bloom, animals come out of hibernation, how did he know I was going to say that next? Geniuses up here, guys. So let's think about this a little bit more. So the leaves that died in the fall are buried underneath the snow in winter, and those leaves break down and fertilize the plants that bloom in the spring. So death was part of God's plan the whole time. So through that death, God creates something new and beautiful. So let's think of the Christian story. When does God turn death into something beautiful? Today, Easter. Yeah. Easter, right? Yeah. There we go. That was hard. Yeah, that was a tricky one. That was a tricky one for sure. Yeah, death was part of God's plan all along that through the death of Jesus, there is new life. God took something so ugly that was a symbol of suffering, pain, and death, and turned it beautiful. The cross shows us that he has the power over death, the power to renew, and the power to make something beautiful out of something ugly. So we're going to do a little activity and to help us visualize what this looks like. So I invite you guys, or if anyone else is in the mood to come up, um, we're going to put flowers in the cross, 
and our goal is to make this harsh and ugly cross beautiful. Exactly. Good job, Paige. Okay. So, um, Abby, should we have Michelle and Judy come up and help with the flowers? Sure. Would that be okay? So, come on up. Our Sunday school teachers. All right. Okay, I'm kids, stand up on your down. feet. We're gonna take some flowers and then see how there's holes. sit down yet. I've got more to say, okay? That's it. <laughs> okay, guys, wonderful job. Look how beautiful this is now. Oh, perfect. Put it in, Paisley. Good catch. Look how good we did. Look how pretty it is now. That's okay. We have a vacuum. It will be good. So before I send you guys off to Sunday school and back to your family, I'd like to end with a little prayer so you guys could bow your heads with me. Dear God, you are the God that makes ugly things beautiful and turns death into life. Thank you for the death of winter so, so that we may have the beauty of spring. Thank you for sending your son to earth that through his death we are made new. You have conquered death so that we may have eternal life with you. And for that, we are thankful. And all God's children say, Amen. Now, just one quick thing here. Ms. Michelle, there's a... Don't... Don't tell anyone there's a scavenger hunt after church. And no, you know, okay, no, no adults allowed, but uh, anyway. So, Michelle, go ahead, because there's a little transition here yeah. as well. So, anybody who would like to stay in church and listen to the beautiful music and um, participate in the service is more than welcome to. Anybody who would like to come back to Sunday school with me is also more than welcome to. We did want to let you know the scavenger hunt is adult savvy as well, so if oh, you feel like you want well, to take on the do, challenge. Okay, never listen to a congregational minister. All right, that's good, that's good. Good, good. <laughs>
Today's unison reading is Psalm 118 and can be found in your bulletin. Please join me. Oh, give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let all Israel say, God's steadfast love endures forever. God is my strength and my might. God has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The strong hand of God does valiantly. The mighty hand of God is exalted. The strong hand of God does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of God. God has punished me severely, but God did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to God. This is the gate of God. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
When <clears throat> Abby was sharing the children's message this morning, you know, she said, you know, what, what, what happens in the fall? What happens in the fall? And children answer, and then she said, what happens in the winter? And I couldn't but help contain myself. I did, however, contain myself. I wanted to say, half the congregation from north goes to Florida. <laughs> or somewhere warm. Let's be together in silence, um, in the presence of the Spirit. Let's just be still for a moment, looking heavenward. Let's bow in prayer. Eternal Lord of life, on this Easter morning, indeed help us to welcome the risen Lord as those welcomed him so long ago on that first Easter. May we embrace, O oh God, your resurrection in its life-changing, life-giving, but always life-sustaining miracle. Today especially, O oh God, we celebrate the manner in which you came into the world in so many different surprising ways. You brought hope and joy, which springs eternal, even out of the darkness. And Lord, your resurrection gives new life to those and all in such surprising ways. If we feel lifeless and forgotten, it is your resurrection, O oh God, that provides that new path. If we find ourselves just sometimes just going through the motions because we're notorious, for trying to do everything ourselves. It is your resurrection, O oh God, who brings comfort and direction. And when we walk through the valley of the shadow of loss, again, O oh God, it is the resurrection of Jesus Christ that helps us. Even in those moments of depression and despair, it is you, O oh God, that always has this new birth. It always is with us. And so this day, as we pray as a congregation, as we share the silent prayers that you know already on our hearts and lips, let us be thankful, O oh God, that in this setting, this sacred place, in this solemn, joyous time, that we can come freely to praise you and to sing and to share and to be embraced by your spirit. May each of us, O oh God, and your world always lean into that everlasting horizon as we follow you, O oh God, in this moment, as we pray, lift us, hold us, that we might rise, O oh God, in faith, in you, from whom all blessings flow. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is from John chapter 20, 
verses 1 through 18. If you'd like to follow along, you can look in your Bible on page 114 of the New Testament. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went with Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned, and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not touch me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them, that he had said these things to her. May God add his blessing to the reading of today's word. Let's bow our heads together. Oh God, may the meditations of all of our hearts in this meditation be pleasing and acceptable unto you. Amen. The Lord asks, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? One of my favorite stories is told of Betty Hutton, the famous actress of the mid-40s and 50s and early 60s, who was an absolute darling of Hollywood, but also Broadway. She had probably one of the most colorful, but yet up and down careers, marked um, by such personal pain, by addiction, multiple divorces, bankruptcies. Yet later in life, in the early 80s, after so much despair and loss, she returned to the Broadway stage in the production of Annie, following a very powerful spiritual awakening. No one thought that she would ever appear on a stage again. Now you know this, as in most plays, The programs contain these extensive biographies of all the actors and actresses. They're kind of like these, like, incredible little 
moments that uh, people look at before the plays begin. Very, very talented people. Betty Hutton, though, did not have a biography under her picture. She had only written <clears throat> six words. When the play ended, the cast then stood on stage and Betty's name was called. The entire theater erupted in this thunderous applause and people cheered and they stood on their feet in joy as Betty Hutton stood center stage and bowed to the crowd with tears streaming down her face and a smile that matched the audience's appreciation that night and affection. The entire theater was overwhelmed with thankfulness. You see, Betty Hutton had written in her biography these simple words. I am back. Thanks be to God. On Good Friday, Jesus was crucified. Jesus was dead. Jesus was buried in what? But on the third day, Jesus announces to the world, I am back. Thanks be to God. This is the absolute foundational principle, promise upon which all of us stand as followers of Christ. We know that the world showed Jesus what they thought of him, and you know this as well. Sometimes it just seems like the world is a Good Friday world. But God showed the world what he thought, she thought of Jesus by raising him from the dead. Somehow, some way, through the heart of loss and tears and death, God enacts this incredible redemption called the resurrection. The resurrection teaches us that the world will fight to the very end, to have the last word. But we know in faith it is God who has the last word. Today we do join with Christians from all over the world. They gather to do exactly what we are doing here this day, proclaiming, praising, singing, he is risen. And because Jesus is risen, so are we. I don't normally bring my iPhone into the pulpit, but I did today because North Church does not have a clock on the balcony wall, and all the other congregational churches I've served has a clock on the balcony wall. Hint, hint, you know what I'm talking about as a preacher. But here's the thing, I, uh, it's, it's, it's on silent mode. My sister and Denver just sent me a text. She said to me, good luck following them. <laughs> yep. She's my older sister. <clears throat> Anne Lamont, wonderful Presbyterian writer, and another person who literally had an incredible career in writing in New York City and, and then um, transitioned because her life had begun to spiral out of control and became a writer of faith. She joined this tiny little Presbyterian church out in California. Just a wonderful, wonderful writer. She wrote a beautiful book called Plan B. Plan B. Don't we all have plan Bs? But she writes, when God is going to do something amazing, God always starts with an impossibility. And she is right. You know, Jesus' resurrection is not so much to be explained as it is to literally be lived. We are the people of the book. We know 
how the resurrection changed those early disciples. Literally, they became 10 times the people they were before the resurrection. On that first Easter, the early followers of Jesus did what? <clears throat> they wiped away the tears. They went to the tomb. They were there to encourage each other to be bonded together, but I think every single one of them thought the same thing. I think all of us would think too. We are going to go back to what we know now. And Oh, my goodness, God had a surprise for them. It was this expansive grace, this love that God at work in the world, this incredible moment when they could not even believe their eyes and their ears. This was a turning point. Rick Warren writes that every time you and I write a letter to someone and we date it, it is the resurrection that points that date from before to after. Jesus is that center pole for each of us. This is the resurrection. This is God's unending love. This is looking out and seeing and touching and feeling and understanding that what i mean and you you know what this is like <clears throat> you know a lot of us a lot of us it doesn't come naturally to forgive but in the faith jesus says forgive even when it makes no sense to forgive because we are first forgiven we know this is true, too, and this is resurrection life. You, you learn it as you grow. Jesus says, turn the other cheek. Even when people around you are telling you not to do it because it's crazy and you're losing your mind. It's Jesus' resurrection when he says, you know, give your coat away. Give it all away even though the person you're giving it to really only wanted your shirt. This is the resurrection every single day. We practice this resurrection. St. Francis said once, it, 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 this has always stuck with me, go out and preach, preach the resurrection. And if you have to, use words as well. This is the hope to which we live. This is today the promise upon which we stand. This is the life of faith, this trust, believing, believing beyond all belief. And we know this. It seems at times the best things in life get crucified, but we know in our faith that they rise again. This is our faith, my friends, and upon it, upon it, you and I, all of us, even my sister Lynn in Denver, and see forever and sing to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let's bow our heads. Oh God, love is why you created each of us, and love is why you came, and love is the way, love is the truth, love is the life everlasting. Thanks. Be to God. Amen. All right. I have one more thing. Lori, it, Lori and the choir, and, uh, all of our uh, uh, instrumentalists also, they know this, but I think we are going to join in something special here. So, Lori, you need to tell us how to do this because I don't know how to do what we're going to do. Oh, come on up here. 
Do you, do you know that Lori Meeker also has a special, she has a screen actor's, uh, like a card? <laughs> you do. I do. I know. So she, she's going to explain this to you because, again, this is our, <coughs> Martha and I, in fact, um, our first Easter with all of you. So I'm going to listen to Lori. And then Lori is going to tell me at coffee hour, Reverend Richards, don't you ever drag me to that pulpit again. <laughs> Well, th this one's easy because it's actually still in, it's in the bulletin for you. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. All right. That, that was good. That was good. <laughs> if anyone, and we encourage you, would like to join us when we do the Hallelujah Chorus after the benediction, please come up and sing with us. We have extra copies. And come up during the last verse of the last hymn. And we will be so happy to have you. Thank you. Join me in our unison, responsive benediction. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us go forth in joy, and let us go forth to share the good news. Hallelujah.
All right. Here's, here's our tradition. They're teaching me this at North Church. We're off the air, which means I can say anything I want to say, and you're going to keep it all confidential, and that's, that's the way it should be. We're not off the air? <laughs> hey, leave them on. That's good. Let's leave them on. Oh, yes, we do. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, Pat? Pat, remember what I said about forgiveness in my sermon? 